Well, I remember you telling me some of these stories that I heard some of them and some of them I was passed out from those long ass trips we used to make. But, and I, and I don't know if I've asked you this before, and I don't know if I've told you this before, Jack, but I want to thank you for the way you treated me when I went to WWE, because I was way, way advanced in my career. I shouldn't even had a job to tell you the truth, but being with you, I had the most fun I ever had in the wrestling business. Because you were hilarious. You listened to my bullshit. <laughs> we go up and down the road. You take care of me. Pull me up to my hotel. Kick me out and tell me you pick me up tomorrow. So you really took care of me. I don't know if I ever thanked you, but I want to thank you publicly. Because if it hadn't have been for you, I couldn't have done it. I just couldn't have done it. But I, And I never thanked you, but I'm, I'm thanking you right now publicly. I uh, thank you for the way you took care of me. Wow, Dutch, that that really means a lot to me. Thank you so much, brother. You're yeah. uh, you're you're a friend, and uh, I look up to you. And uh, you helped me through some sticky situations, and you helped me, uh, you know, in not so sticky situations. So it, it's <laughs> well, I really enjoyed being with you. Since we've got that out of the way. Let me ask you, when I first showed up. How the hell am I supposed to be mean to you now after you say that, by the way? I don't know. You, you can't. <laughs> then you'll be, a big, you'll be a bigger asshole than you already are. But <laughs> when I showed up in WWE, it was, I still remember the date, February the 11th, I think. Yeah. 2013. Yeah. Did you know me from Adam's house, Cat? No. I... I feel like I like I knew the name like Dutch Mantel kind of sounds like a wrestling name. So I was like, oh, yeah, I, I know that wrestler, you know, but not really. Uh, and, somebody and pulled me. It, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Somebody pulled me aside and smartened me up on who you were and what you had done. So. Had but had they mentioned anything about me coming in and being put with you and managing you have they said had they said anything at all about that they didn't really tell me a whole lot um and then they kind of just that day i feel like said hey we want to give you a mouthpiece give you uh, give someone to go out there with you well right oh yeah that's what they they told me too and i went but when i first went there they didn't tell me anything about you I uh -huh. thought they wanted me because they wanted me to go to NXT. That's what I actually thought. And oh. then when I got down there, I talked to Triple H first. Mm -hmm. And he says, listen, we're we're trying to get a guy to talk for or to be the mouthpiece like, like they told you for swagger. And to tell the truth, I knew who you were, but I didn't know a lot about you. Mm -hmm. I'd seen pictures and a few things, and I said, well, hell, I needed a job anyway. I don't give a shit if they're going to put me with Humpty Dumpty. I didn't give a crap. But they put me with you, which was a blessing, I find out now. And the first night, we walked out in Nashville, and they gave us the We the People gimmick. Yeah. And halfway through that promo, I started to feel the people. Mm -hmm. They started to move a little bit because mm -hmm. back then, that was the start of the Tea Party movement, and they wanted something to – to kind of catapult off that. Uh, and I think we hit it right on because then they started to move. We would do that. I want every real American to please rise and put your hand over your heart and say along with us, we the people. And not many of them stood up that night because they didn't, they didn't know what we were doing. But by the second week and the third week, they were all standing up. Everyone. And I remember, and you'll remember this too, People telling me, oh, people are going to hate you. People are going to hate you. Guys. Remember the reaction? So many <laughs> mainstream newscasters were yeah. on their programs crying. Uh, Glenn Beck was one of them. Uh, Beck. They, they said that oh, they, like, they were like, they're not going to take this from us. You know, you're not going to take this from the, the, the tea party type deal. <laughs> God, we and had they, them. Yeah, they were they were right there. 
I, I can't imagine if they would if they could do something like that today, which they're afraid to do. Yeah, uh, it'd be hot. But yeah. I, I, even when we went to Europe, we would we would say, "I want every real American," and half of them would stand up. Yeah, I tell a story about when I went to Manchester when 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 I said I want every Englishman to please rise, and that was different. They went Englishman. They all stood, put yeah. your hand over the heart, and say along with us, uh-huh. "God save the Queen." The place come <laughs> in. The, the 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 place come in. Yeah, yeah. So it, you can it, still it, it you was... know that inter- you know that interview I did in Wales. Okay. Yeah. You know, let me tell the people, every time that Jack and I did a live show, they would always tell us, listen, right before your match, do a promo. And we did that. Nobody else did it. And they would put us out there every night and we would do a promo and then we would have the match because they found the promo very entertaining. And one night we were in Wales and remember Jack, what I used to do, I said, oh, it's great to be in Scotland tonight. And then you go, uh, whisper in my ear, we're, we're not in Scotland. <laughs> we're in Wales. I said, what? Really? I said, Wales? wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get the Like, they're going to pull the little cane out there and yank us off the stage. And I say, Wales, like like the Wales at Disney World or whatever. <laughs> no, no, Wales, a country. Oh. And then the people, they'd start booing. Yeah. And then we would get on them. And I would tell them if they didn't start booing, I was going to send you out there to beat shit out of each and every one of them. <laughs> but I really had fun doing that. That was fun. It was so, incredible. And it really exploded from the moment. And I think we understood how big it was, but WWE didn't understand how big it truly was because one, you have this, this guy coming out, crazy looking mustache, and <laughs> you you would light them up, you'd lay into their country, and you would say these things purposely to get them mad at you. And then it didn't matter because no matter what you said, they would um they would stand up at the end of it and put their hand over their heart and, and say along with you. So it was really incredible. And I can remember so many nights in that first couple of weeks, we would go through the back and be like, Dutch, you said this. And then they still said we the people with us. <laughs> yeah. And I think the people in a lot of ways were smarter than we were. They were mm-hmm. smarter than WWE creative. Mm. But it was a it was a fun gimmick to do. I tell a story one time. Remember when we went down on the border in in Mexico? <laughs> and what was the guy's name who who was our security? What was his name? Remember him? Uh, Jimmy or Scott? Maybe it was Scott. But he yeah. didn't go with me one night. Uh huh. And those Spanish speaking people. They were cussing me like a dog. I know enough cuss words in Spanish to know they weren't saying, we love you, Dutch. They were saying, I ain't going to kill you, Chingo to Madre. And, you know, it's Chingo to Madre. If you speak Spanish, you know what it is. But even if you don't, they say it in such a way that it sounds horrible. Chingo to Madre. You said, damn, that can't be good. Yeah. But anyway, they were coming over that railing at me. So I went to the bank and I said, Scott. Where were you? And he said, he, because he didn't go out with me one night. He said, why? I said, those people out there are trying to get me. He said, oh, bullshit. They're not going to do nothing to you. I said, let me tell you one thing, Scott. If they bother me and I get hurt, you're getting fired. The <laughs> next night he went with me and he saw how they acted. It was another town on the border. Yeah. He said, you're not kidding, are you? And I said, no, I wasn't kidding. Why, why would I kid about that? I need you, man. But they were. Because a lot of our whole push was against immigrants yeah. coming, sneaking across the border. Vince yeah. loved that. Yeah. They would tell me sometimes, they said, in this interview, do the little sneaking across. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because it Vince, was- and he said, I always roll those R's when you say Alberto del Rio. Yeah. <laughs> they and said he loved-, he loved that too. And they said, whatever you do, do this and roll the R's. Yeah. You're fine. And then and so if that's your there, real name. He loved that one too. <laughs> if that is your real name. Yeah. Okay. What was Alberto Del Rios? What was this manager's name? Uh, Ricardo Rodriguez. Ricardo Rodriguez. You know, he told somebody, he didn't say you, but he said me. 
He said, he's really racist. Mm -hmm. I went, what? Because he believed we sold him Mm -hmm. that we hated Mexicans. Mm -hmm. And so that's doing your job. If you can convince the people you work with that you're really racist. Of course, I'm not racist. I only, I hate racist people. I hate them. I only hate two types of people, racist and Mexicans. (laughs) (laughs) He's kidding. That's a joke, people. That's That's a joke, people. That's a joke. A racist would say, yeah. That's what I got. Watch a guy here called Gutfeld, and he'll, he'll say something like that every night. He'd say a misogynist would say that's to keep the people off him. But anyway, I had a, gr- I had a great time with you. Yeah, uh, Ricardo should it. go back and uh, watch that video that we did for Glenn Beck because I don't think we get enough credit for it. Uh, we had everyone worked in this day and age. We had everyone worked. And then we go and do that video and we turn off the green screen and then you break character yeah. and you start really laying it into them. I mean, I need to get that video and, and put it out there more because no, no, it's, it's still up. Yeah. It's on YouTube somewhere in your meetings with Vince, uh, all the times you met him, how many times did you meet him? You said 10 times and yeah, maybe 10 times. 10 years. I- I rode on the plane with him a couple times, um, but mostly just meetings day of uh, TV, which are, you know, they suck. You wait outside his office for three or four hours to get in there for five minutes and like spit your case. And mm-hmm. yeah. Well, when if you met him eight or 10 times, that's like eight times more than I met with him. Cause he, ne- he never really called me in there for anything. You remember the first time I did an interview in that audition? Were you in there? I do. I do. Let's talk about that because I remember it as you creating We the People in the interview. Well, I think they had the lines of it. I don't know. They had to like, they didn't have the the structure of it. You cut one promo and it was like what they wanted and it was along the guidelines, but it didn't have like a finishing thing. Mm-hmm. And I, I did remember that you, in the third one. Yeah. And then on the third one, I felt like you just sit it and everyone got goosebumps like, oh, that's so cool. And, oh. and, just, and just take the credit, Dutch. I'll, I'll, I'll take the credit. But I went down there without a job. Yeah. I met with Triple H. I went down there at 3 30, met with Triple H at 4 yeah. 30. I did the interview audition at 5 30. By got six hired. o'clock, it's... Corano was trying to bury you. <laughs> and Corano, folks, is the talent relations guy that's since been fired because he he packed up some stuff and sent it back to who? Uh Mickey James. sent it back to Mickey James. Yeah. And they didn't like the way he packaged her stuff up that she had left there and yeah, ended up okay. getting fired. But anyway, at 6.30, they hired me at 7.30. We went out live on TV. <laughs> I, I got hired and a gimmick and everything in about a yeah. five-hour period. Un- I mean, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Unbelievable how the longest episode of TV in history was run. is still run. I'm sure it's still like that. It's incredible that you were able to go out there and nail it as much as you did, knowing what you knew. Like, we just got this. Like, professional actors get it months, and, yeah, uh, yeah. You, you know, and you're just going out there. If you can handle live television, you can handle anything. You can handle a professional MMA fight like that because live television is so – it's a living beast, and it's something else, and you have it so is. much to manage to, like – to do it it really is hard it's hard to explain 